This is the Carbon X3. And while Hoka positions this shoe as an endurance racer, for those of us who aren't trying to break 50 mile road running records, the shoe has been a bit confusing. Will this version finally give us some answers? It's time to lace up the X3 and take it for a run. Ten point four two miles, seven minutes, forty eight seconds per mile. Going for a workout today, where I had six times six minutes at threshold pace with one minute recoveries. A perfect way to test the Carbon X three. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, after just a couple of runs, now I do want to go over some disclosures. Hoka sent me these shoes to review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So, with that disclosure out of the way. Let's talk about the Hoka Carbon X3. Now, first, let's go over some specs. In this shoe, we've got a setup that's very similar to the Carbon X2, which I also ran in last year. This year, we still have the 32 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a five millimeter drop, giving us 27 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. This year, what they've done to the foam is they've changed it. They've made it so that it's lighter and a little bit bouncier as well. And the carbon that's in here is a forked carbon fiber plate that I believe is in the same configuration and position as it was in the Carbon X2. Underneath the main midsole foam that you're seeing in the Carbon X3, what you're seeing on the outer layer isn't an outsole, but it is that second foam that's part of that ProFly system. This outer foam is a foam that you can run on. It's a rubberized EVA that gives a little bit of extra responsiveness, and it also gives that traction and durability to protect the main midsole foam here, which is what you're seeing in the Carbon X3. The other thing to note in terms of differences, even though the shoes look almost exactly the same in terms of the midsole, they are slightly different. If you're looking at some of the numbers on the sidewalls of the Carbon X2 and the Carbon X3, they're the same, except for the fact that the V number, the volume of midsole foam that's used in these two shoes is a little bit different. In the Carbon X2, it's 728 cubic centimeters of midsole foam, whereas in the Carbon X3, it's 736. I'm having a hard time figuring out exactly where that difference is, but I think that part of that difference is attributable to the fact that they've changed the upper a little bit in terms of the shape. I feel like in the Carbon X3, we're getting a little bit more room in the toe box and a fit that's overall just a little bit more comfortable. And overall, I'm liking the changes that they made to the upper. They're pretty drastic and visually, it's easy to kind of pick up. In the X3, we've got this fantastic knit upper. And in the X2, we had more of a traditional upper. The X2 was really good and I think a big improvement over the X1 that I also ran in, but I feel like they've taken those improvements and gone even a step further with the X3. Not only are they using a knit material and a real knit material, now I've always loved knit materials in shoes, but what frustrates me about the shoe industry in general is when they say knit, it can mean a variety of things. Sometimes it could be like, it's technically a knitted material, so they're calling it knit, but it's not really that comfortable, not much more comfortable than say an engineered mesh. Other times you've got real knit and the Carbon X3 has real knit. It is so fantastic. It is so stretchy. It's so comfortable, but it's also strong. And the strength that's coming in the knit in the Carbon X3 comes from not only the use of the knit material that they're using, but also the monofilament fibers that are kind of like in between some of the knit material or interwoven in there. And that's what's giving the shoe its structure and its shape. So that way it can handle not only easy paces, but some more intense efforts as well. As we go towards the 
tongue is just all one big booty construction, which is something that the running shoe industry kind of like started doing a lot and then went away from it a little bit. I'm happy to see it come back because I love this kind of shoe construction. It's very comfortable. There's no padding on the tongue, which is exactly how I like it. It does come up a little bit taller, but that's okay. It still all feels really good. Moving around back towards the heel cup, there's a little bit of structure in this heel cup from like kind of squeezing it to the side. There isn't a lot of rigidity, but there is a little bit of something back here, kind of like right on the ball of the heel that gives it a little bit of protection and structure, a little bit of a cup for your heel to sit into. And that comes up to uh, an Achilles flare, which is really nice and comfortable to touch, but also curls away from the Achilles, so it's not gonna be rubbing up in here. Also to help keep the shoe in place and feeling snug on the foot as you're running, there's a couple of bumper pads that are along each side of the ankle, so that way everything stays nice and snug. Altogether, even though with all the changes, the added volume of foam and changing to a knit material, this shoe has lost weight compared to last year, and now the Carbon X3 comes in at a weight of 7.8 ounces and 222 grams. All right, so what has it been like to run in this shoe. Now I've had this shoe at a variety of paces and I think this is technically my third run in the shoe. I originally got it last uh, November or December when I was down in Austin for the running event. I had a chance to test it out on the track, do a couple of warm up laps out there. I also then took it to California as I was running the California International Marathon up in Sacramento. And I did my last big, not big, but my last kind of like longer run um, of my taper before CIM in the carbon X3 where I ran the last 10k of the CAM course um, in the Carbon X3 mostly at easy pace but a couple of miles at marathon pace as well just to give that a try and then for today I had many easy paces but also that threshold work so that pace is somewhere in between half marathon and 10k pace for me and so I've had a variety of experiences in the shoe and I think that at all of those effort levels that I've run at I'm really liking the changes that they've made to the Carbon X3's midsole foam. That top layer of the ProFly system, like the big bulk of the foam that you're seeing, has gotten a little bit softer, but also is maintaining a responsiveness. And so last year in the Carbon X2, I felt like a lot of the speed in the shoe came from the spring motion of like rolling forward on the shoe. The Carbon I felt in the X2, I felt like it was kind of catching me as I landed and then helped me roll and spring forward into the next step. In the Carbon X3, I mean, depending on the paces that you're running at, it behaves a little bit differently, but generally I'm feeling a lot more of the foam. I'm feeling a little bit less of the carbon, but I'm feeling the foam absorbing impact and then also springing back in a nice and pleasant way as I'm going to the next foot strike. So I like the changes that they made to the foam. Not only is it lighter, which is always a welcome bonus, but I do think that it is a little bit more forgiving of a material, a little bit softer of a material, but also a little bit more kind of lively of a material. I feel like I'm getting something back from it. It doesn't feel quite as firm and solid as it did last year in the X2. So I'm really liking the changes. It's a wider base of a shoe as it was last year. I think, you know, pretty much the footprint of each of these shoes seems almost identical to me. But overall, the Carbon X shoe, the X2 or the X3, is a wider base of a shoe. And I feel like that helps it to become more useful at some of those slower paces. So if maybe you're at marathon pace, maybe you're a little bit slower than marathon pace. Maybe it's kind of like an up tempo kind of day, something between easy and moderate. Uh, I feel like the wide nature of that base makes it a little bit easier to live with at some of those paces. Or if you're just going to take it out for an easy run, I think this is one of those carbon plated shoes that you can take out for an easy run and it won't really penalize you. It won't really feel like an out of place choice in terms of your footwear for the day. I feel like this shoe can handle easy paces really well. Now, is it a shoe that I would buy specifically for easy paces? Probably not. For that, I would look at the Mach 4, which is a very similar concept and design. And I feel like those two shoes could actually work really well together, having the Mach 4 for your daily trainer, and then for your longer runs using the Carbon X3. You're getting a very similar design. You've got the swallowtail in terms of what's going on in the back of the heel, and you've got the ProFly system and the rocker in both of those shoes. So you're gonna get similar feels, but one geared towards more the easy days and one geared towards maybe those longer runs or those longer runs with some speed in there as well. As I'm moving up to that marathon effort or that moderate effort, I feel like that is a real sweet spot for me. I feel like that's my favorite place to have it 
between like easy and marathon pace. So like something in that up tempo range, something in that like light to moderate range or all the way up to moderate or marathon pace. I feel like that's where the shoe just is very easy going. At no point does it feel like it's a very aggressive shoe or a very harsh shoe. It's just very agreeable. And because it's lightweight, it's something that I feel like I can really take for those longer runs. Now, it's not a max cushion shoe. You're not getting a nice squish in there or anything like that. So it's a little bit different from that kind of long run shoe. But I think for something where you're gonna be looking to put a couple of pace changes in your long run, I think that the Carbon X3 is going to do really well. If it's something where you're gonna be going a little bit faster than marathon pace, like for example, for a threshold workout, I do think that this shoe is very capable. I really enjoyed it for my threshold workout today. I mean, this is kind of my first threshold workout back in a while, so I didn't always enjoy the workout, but I enjoyed having these shoes with me for this workout. I do feel like the ProFly Midsole Foam really steps up to the task of when you are pushing off a little bit harder, when you are hitting the ground a little bit harder at those harder efforts. I feel like the X3 Foam gives a good compression and it gives a good decompression as well, and I like kind of like the response curve that this shoe has at those paces. But as I get faster, like the faster that I'm trying to get going in this shoe that's like in terms of my personal preferences the more that i want something that feels a little bit more aggressive that's where i would love to feel a little bit more of that carbon i'd like to feel like i'm getting shoved a little bit by the carbon and that's where like not feeling the carbon in the shoe really starts to become a little bit of not a negative for me but a something i wish i could have in the shoe as far as using this as say like a marathon racer so ultimately for me i think that this shoe fits in as a really great training companion most of the people looking at this shoe are probably looking at road marathons i think for those people like me that that we're gonna find that we in, really enjoy this shoe for those days where there's a little bit of marathon or even threshold pace in the context of a much longer run. So there's gonna be a lot of period of time where we're running easy paces, maybe like a three, four mile warm up before the workout and then running a couple miles to finish off the run or to get back home. That kind of run, I think this shoe is gonna be perfect. The shoe that I think that this reminds me the most of, and maybe it's just because I like the knit material so much, in this shoe is the zoom fly fly in it my favorite of the zoom flies i didn't run in the zoom fly 4 and uh, the zoom fly 3 was okay the zoom fly 2 the zoom fly fly in it was my favorite of all the zoom flies and the react foam that was in that shoe plus the carbon fiber plate i think make that a really similar feel to what's going on in this shoe now the zoom fly fly in it had a little bit more of a carbon oomph to it uh, that i wish the carbon x3 had but i feel like uh, in terms of nostalgia, I feel like that's what this shoe is really giving me a lot of, and I'm really enjoying it as a shoe that I can wear for an easy run, for a workout. I can do kind of a lot of stuff with it. There is some versatility, uh, although it's geared more towards kind of like the workout end of that spectrum, but there's a wider range of things that this shoe can do. Plus, also I think that as far as the fit goes, I think there's a little bit more volume in the toe box in terms of these two shoes, the Carbon X2 to the Carbon X3. I feel like uh, there's just a lot more room on each side and there's more total volume in the top as well in terms of like height of the toe box. So I just feel like this fit with the knit material in the forefoot is gonna make it very easy to spend many, many hours in this shoe. So those are my thoughts on the Carbon X3 after just a few runs. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I hold every Monday through Friday on my Kofuzi Run Club live stream channel. I'll post a link to that channel in the description below. You can always ask me anything over there, whether it's about this shoe or any other shoe or any other running questions you may have. If I can't answer the question, we got a good group of people over there that will certainly be able to help you out. And it's just a great place for runners to hang out. Hopefully I'll see you there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?